All right, today we're going to talk about the concept of three-point editing. Uh, three-point editing is pretty basic, and it's something you've been doing all along and perhaps didn't even know it. The main thing is understanding what's going on with three-point editing, whether you're working in Avid Media Composer or Premiere Pro. Rather than letting uh, the three-point edit happen unconsciously or in the background, you might as well leverage it to your advantage. FYI, I'm going to do this demo primarily with source record editing, so source green, record blue, and primarily with the overwrite button B for overwrite B-roll on your keyboard, but I want to point that out. I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of drag and drop editing with my red timeline segment arrow over here. So remember these two arrows are for timeline. Segment editing, dragging and dropping, that sort of thing. So instead of that, I'll mostly be using the composer window over here. So let's get going. Uh, first of all, I have a sequence here called uh, 2019 Start Marked, and uh, I want to preserve the sequence before I start mucking around with it so i'm going to highlight and command d on the sequence icon here and that will duplicate the sequence and you'll find command d is a universal keyboard shortcut much like command z command d duplicates files and microsoft word documents and whatever the case may be uh, command d is worth knowing so i have a little uh, music video here i'll play a chunk for you. First of all, I'm going to zoom into the timeline. I've got my slider here. Uh, I can expand the timeline that way or I command right bracket, command left bracket, right under plus and minus. By the way, if you command right bracket a lot, you'll zoom in and your playhead in the timeline will split. So the blue bar is the beginning of the frame. The slightly not solid bar is the end of the frame and that's all that's going on there. You're just zoomed in really far. If that happens to you, command left bracket to come back out. Okay, where were we? So this is the shot I'm going to uh, overwrite or get rid of. This little snowboarding uh, video here. And uh, it's basically just a little music video, footage cut to music. And this character in our uh, movie has had uh, some problems, uh, I believe substance abuse problems. So uh, he's been voted off the snowboard team. Uh, besides, the downhill skiers are quite upset because they have not gotten enough representation in our little uh, video here. So I've got a downhill skier uh, queued up, and uh, this is some stock shot of that. Now I want to pick up this shot where I have uh, conveniently added a marker, a green marker, and I want to basically take it from here to here. The problem is this is not going to fit in this slot. Now, uh, I've marked the slot by putting the playhead on the clip in the timeline and hitting the T button. Think T for target. If I put my playhead here and I have the right track selected, you have to be aware of that. Track selection is important. These are all in the V1 track. I put the playhead there. I hit T for target, and this shot would be targeted, but this is the one I actually want to replace. Playhead, T for target. Check that track panel. Now, the concept of three-point editing, like I said, is pretty basic. If you're a drag and drop editor, if I decided to drag this shot down, I basically am taking the shot from where the playhead is and I am dragging it into the slot where there's the marks. So the playhead, the green playhead over here is point 0.1 and this is point 0.2 and this is point 0.3. Now that constrained the, uh, the drag and drop. I'm going to undo that and do it again because the other thing that happened which is not related to the three-point editing is I had the track panels turned on here in the source and when you're drag and dropping really only the source track panels matter the record track panels are irrelevant okay I'm going to turn off the track panels this time and drag and drop now this is what I'm used to uh, have. Uh, okay it's kind of it's interesting I don't remember this constraining like this before if you don't get it exactly in the right spot you can see it's overwriting that whole chunk but it's actually drag and drop constraining the edit, uh, the footage into that one second 20 frame hole that I have marked. Uh, there's also a keyboard shortcut command, which will also constrain that, but apparently this is doing it automatically. Um, anyways, I'm not much of a drag and drop editor. So uh, I drag and drop like that and I get my three points. I'm gonna undo that. If I were gonna mark this, Let's say we want him starting at the top of the, almost out of frame there, almost out of shot, and we'll mark it in, and we'll have him come down, and he splashes snow in the face of the, uh, the camera operator, and we mark an out. Now, 
Here I have four points. I have a duration in the source monitor that's two seconds, 28 frames. And this is called center duration, as my tooltip is telling me. Over here, I have uh, one second, 20 frames. So it's something's got to give. So essentially what Media Composer is going to do is going to prioritize the duration of the record side of the edit. Um, and it's basically going to cut off a chunk of this. So it's basically going to ignore that out point. So again, I'm back to one, two, three. The out point will be ignored. I'm going to put the, uh, uh, the doesn't really matter where the playhead is because I have marks. So I'm going to go ahead and overwrite. The B key is uh, overwrite. And you can think of the overwrite uh, key as B for B-roll. I am replacing this B-roll shot. And without further ado, I'll hit the B, boom, B, and I've replaced the shot. So as advertised, it came in at one second, 20 frames. Now you might be disappointed that you didn't get the part of the guy kicking snow into the DP's face. There are ways to alleviate that. We could talk about slipping the shot, which would involve the lassoing from right to left around the whole segment, rather than lassoing left to right around the whole segment. I'll cover uh, slipping in more detail later, but if you right to left around an entire segment, you'll get a segment selection. If you lasso around a cut and nothing but a cut, so help you God, you'll get a trim selection. I'm gonna hit escape. I'm not in trim anymore. I'm back in source record. You can see we have green and blue versus the gray bar of trim here, which is kind of nice, whoever suggested that green and blue thing. But if you are lassoing, from right to left, and again, I, just to reiterate, or if I haven't already, uh, I should do a whole thing on lassoing. Lasso selecting, you start from the background of the timeline, not the tracks. There's a keyboard. Uh, if you hold the option, you have a lot of tracks, you can lasso within the tracks. I don't want to get uh, too off on uh, the lasso tangent here. But so now I'm holding a lasso and I'm lassoing right to left, very important, around the entire segment. And I get that selection and essentially I can drag this roller, I have a roller at the front, roller at the back, and I can single roll at the front forward and I'm rolling out the back. So I'm trimming off the front and rolling in material in the back end, so to speak. And uh, I basically have slipped the shot. So 30 frames and I have my play loop. And uh, so that's a little side note on slipping. Slipping will be on the final. I'm gonna hit escape and pretend I never did that. Let's pretend we never deviated into that area. Because another thing you can do is this. I'm gonna go all the way back. So I'm all the way back to this point. I've undone a few steps. My substance abuse guy is back. This shot's back. Now you have a couple of tools in here that might help you understand three point editing or it might confuse the hell out of you. One to be aware of is phantom marks. And you can turn on phantom marks right up here under the composer pull down menu. Now, this will be grayed out if you've clicked on the wrong window, by the way. So if your composer window is not highlighted or active, so note this, this window is now active. If I click down here in the timeline, the timeline is now active. I come up to the composer pull down. It's like, hey, wait, professor, uh, what, my phantom marks aren't available. Well, it's only a composer feature only. I also wish they would turn on in the timeline as well, but they don't. Anyway, so I'm going to hit show phantom marks. And boom, what do we get here? Wow, uh, now I have one, two, three, four, five points. So what the hell's going on here? Well, what this is showing is basically where the edit would end. The edit's not gonna end here. The edit's gonna end at the blue mark. So the blue mark is just a reference mark, basically showing you that you know this should have a slash through it or something or turn red, this out point because it's not really being utilized. So this is interesting, phantom marks. What can you do with this? Well, I could see where the edit's gonna end and maybe I'm gonna clear my, uh, I'm gonna hit the G key for gone, baby, gone, clear the in and outs. I could do D, done for the in point. I could do F for F the out point. I'm gonna hit G for gone, baby, gone. So G, boom. Now I have, whoa, what's going on now? I have two phantom marks. Well, basically the playhead is the in point and the out point is one second, 20 frames after the in point based on this duration. If this out point was over here in the timeline, I'm gonna hit O for outs. You'll see that the phantom is now moved. I'm gonna go back to my one second 20 frame mark. Um, if I wanna move my playhead around and not be at the mercy of my playhead being an end point, I could use this, leverage the, the locator, the marker I have here. I can talk about those later. Put an end point and now I'm free to move the playhead and sort of see what's what. I can also hit the W key, Q up, to the out or whip the playhead to the out if you want to remember it like that w 
versus Q to QU to the endpoint like that. And without further ado, I'll go ahead and overwrite. Boom. All right, so that's that. Now let me undo that last uh, overwrite. Command Z, we're back to uh, this situation. I'm gonna come up to the uh, source window, activate it. So always be aware of which window you're activating right now. The sequence window or record window is active. It's slightly lighter blue than it normally is. I come over here and now we're slightly lighter green. So the source window is active. I wanna clear this mark. Quickest way to do it is uh, D done with the in or G for gone baby gone. Get rid of uh, all the marks if you have an in and out. G, boom. We're done. All right, so here's another way of thinking about three-point editing. I could, uh, I have my in and I have my out. I could also put an out point here where the guy kicks snow in the face of the uh, camera operator, the DP. So I'm gonna put an out point right there, out, and now I have a phantom over here. So I'm basically doing a three-point edit and the edit's gonna back time from this point, one second, 20 frames, to that point. So you can back in, let's say if you have an action point that's interesting to you, you're not really that concern with where the shot's going to start you could arrange the edit that way and i have one two three the phantom is this there for reference i can hit q and q up and yes that's where the shot's going to start boom overwrite all right command z that now here's something interesting all that other stuff was interesting too but let's say you never heard of phantom marks i'm going to make sure the composer window is active click on it it's active composer pull down menu Turn off the phantom marks. You can also right click in here and get to the phantom marks that way. Show phantom marks, boom, they're off. All right, so I have a, an out point, I have no in point, and let's say you wanted to preview the in point in your source monitor. You actually have what I call phantom phantom marks involving Q for QU to the in point and W to whip you to the out point. Well, I'm gonna put the playhead way over here. I'll hit W and of course W is gonna snap me to that out point. But what's Q gonna do? There's no end point. If I hit Q, it's probably gonna take the playhead all the way to the front of this clip, right? Uh, you would be wrong. If you hit Q, it's actually gonna calculate the duration based on the duration of the shot you're gonna replace in the timeline. So that calculated, even without the phantom marks, where the shot's gonna start. Now here's something that's even kinda cooler. If you hit the six key, uh, by default, the six key will play in to out. So if I, I'm over here on record, hit the six key, boom. It's playing me from that in point to that out point. Uh, I believe option six will loop continuously and you can really annoy your friends and uh, lovers. So let's stop that. But six will play from in to out. Now over here on the uh, source side, interestingly enough, six will calculate the in point, the phantom phantom in point. Uh, based on this duration. And if I do option six, it will also loop over there. So that's kind of interesting. So if you just have an out point or an end point, you can use six to kind of preview what's gonna happen here. Uh, again, when you're gonna do an overwrite from source to record, be aware of your track panels. V1's going to V1. Uh, make sure they're on the right level. I want V1 going to V1. I can patch like that just to review track panels. And unlike Premiere Pro, you really have to be aware of your source track panels as well as your record track panels. When you're doing source record editing, that is. So primarily I've been using the uh, red overwrite button over here. The difference here is we have yellow splice, which has got frames underneath it, and red overwrite. But not to confuse those icons with your segment timeline editing buttons over here. Just to reiterate that because I know people can get confused. Anyway, since I've been mostly doing source record editing, the short and long of the track panels is both the green side audio tracks and the blue side audio tracks need to be highlighted if you want that audio to come over and overwrite this section. If these are not highlighted like so, essentially the green track panels here are blocked from coming over with a source record editing scenario. In other words, the doors have to be open on both sides if you want stuff to migrate over from the source monitor into your record monitor, i.e. your sequence. So just to review all that, but that's basically three-point editing. Again, in this scenario, I have one, two, three, leveraging the out point on the source monitor. And there will be a question about three-point editing on the final, so a note to selves. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll fix that in post. Oh, wait. 
We're in post.